There's two forms of analog modulation in the syllabus. One of them is amplitude modulation. The other one is frequency modulation. Let's just have a look at AM, amplitude modulation of a radio. AM radio works in Australia at around about 1 megahertz, 1000 kilohertz. Voice goes from 20 to 20,000 hertz is the range of audible frequencies. 10,000 hertz is about the, um, let's say the midpoint. Typical voice is about two to 8,000. The higher frequency noises are more the higher end music that you hear. So, that means if I am going to amplitude modulate, as we know the signal out of a speaker looks like that. Positive voltage versus time. We need to get rid of the negative, so we add it to a DC voltage, plus, I don't know, pick a number that suits, plus DC. I'm going to say that's minus 2 to plus 2. So let's add 3 volts, or no, let's add 2 volts DC. That will give us now, there's zero, that wave now has just shifted up so it always stays positive. Maximum frequency there is 10 kilohertz versus 1000 kilohertz means for every one sound wave there's 100 radio waves travelling inside of it. So let's say that's high frequency, there's 100 waves, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have got 100 points on the top to show where that wave is. So we get the sound wave and we add the carrier wave to it. That's your carrier wave. That's a signal. Remember the five steps of every single telecommunication system. You get the signal, you modulate it, you transmit, you demodulate, and then you output. So we have got let me draw it as you see it in a book. They make the sine wave a little bit bigger, just so you can understand what's going on. You don't see that, you see this. That's what you see in a textbook. In the real world, there's 100 to 50 to 200 radio to 500 radio waves radio wave peaks per sound wave. That gives the um, strength we need. So, signal modulated, modulated. Let's now have a look at the demodulation circuit. It is simply, that is an aerial. Comes out of the aerial across a coil, I'll stop it there, going down to earth. This is the simplest form of AM radio that existed in the 1920s that did not need a battery. Sitting here there is a variable capacitor. A capacitor stores charge. It's variable, that's what the arrow through the symbol means. So think of a capacitor as two plates. If that's positive, that's negative. When that's highly positive, that plate's charged highly positive and it sucks electrons up. When this loses charge, becomes not so highly positive, it releases electrons and lets them run back into the circuit. 
So a capacitor is essentially a stores charge. The electrons cannot cross a, uh, across that middle plate. It has what's called a dielectric in between, an insulator. So the aerial picks up and picks up all this radio wave. One changing electrical wave um, has a nine, has a rate has a magnetic wave at ninety degrees to it. The aerial picks up that changing magnetic wave, releases an electrical signal back down the line. This here is the tuning part of the circuit. Tunes to one frequency only. Because the aerial is picking up every single radio station that's possible. And it's producing so many different waves, it's just a garbled mess. I might have 873, I might have pick a number 1300 and something frequency, I might have 576. So I've got basically all these various frequencies all happening at once. So it might be seeing that, it might be seeing this, it might be seeing that, it might be seeing that one there, and that is static. In order for a radio to work, you need to isolate one frequency only. That's why we modulate, so you can use multiple signals at once. So you transmit, everything transmits, but then you've got to take the signal and pull out the one you want. So this is the tuning circuit. It's a variable capacitor and a coil or a ferrite choke running in parallel that just basically oscillates and just means the circuit only picks up or delivers one frequency further down the line. So, in here now we have a signal diode. The signal here, what have I got in a different colour? Blue. That's point one. That is the signal there at point one. We are seeing the entire signal. A diode, as you know, is a one-way valve for electricity. So at point two, we are seeing this. Only the positive half. None of this negative part that was down here, and I'm only seeing the half wave. Starting to look like the sound wave again now, isn't it? Of course, you don't see that top black bit that I've drawn in there. That was the what's called the envelope of the waveform. So you see that in here. I'm going to put in another capacitor. Remember that I said the capacitor here? If it's highly positive, it attracts the charge, then it releases it slowly. So with the right size capacitor at point three in the circuit, point three in the circuit, comes up and then just slowly gives us back the original radio signal. So it collects that, drains out, and just removes all that fluctuating waveform. So now all I see, of course, you don't see that top black bit that I've drawn in there. That was the what's called the envelope of the waveform. So you see that. You don't see that. You see this. Point three turns that by just basically discharge, 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 produces back that um, original signal. That's how an AM radio actually demodulates. One final point, I'm just waiting until the ink dries here. Let me remove that. The headphones. Headphones need to be high impedance. Impedance is resistance. 
Why do they need to be high resistance? Power equals I squared R. That is picking up incredibly small currents, but yet you need to be able to hear the signal. Let's say it's picking up 0 0.0002 amps. If you need to hear something, you need an incredibly high resistance to get enough power which is the volume you need to get an incredibly high amount of resistance in those speakers to deliver you enough power so you can hear. 